share some some practical advice or maybe share some things that you wish the audience would know if you were in their shoes and doing your very first startup for the first time and and going out for fundraising what what advice can you give everybody in the audience i mean sir one one bit of advice is more actually about yourself and your co-founders so when you're early which is about how you structure your equity so one of the biggest things that happen to founders and startups is it takes a long time to get going and to make it really successful. It just, it just, and it probably will take longer than you expect. So um, what I've done at my last company, and I wish I had done it earlier than that, uh, was we essentially had the two founders, we had a six year grants. So we vested over six years and we had three different grants. So literally oh. it meant, so we essentially had a bell curve almost. So by the, by year three, all three of our grants were vesting continuously. So the, the, the reason you do that is because, of course, the amount of equity you have as a founder is outsized compared to everybody else, number one. Number two, there's a pretty decent chance by like year three or year four, you or your co-founder is going to get burned out and going to decide you don't want to be there. But man, if you split your company 50-50 with you and your co-founder, and then they stay for, let's call it just two years to make the math easy, they now have 25% of the company that they vested, that they're walking away with. And you barely, you're probably still barely getting off the like the ground floor with that. Yeah, that sucks. That is now a massive overhang that you need to find a way to recap the company, buy that person out. It's hugely disruptive, um, inexpensive to deal with. So I would put yourself and your co-founder on a six-year vest because guess what? You're going to be around for six years, probably closer to ten, to get it done. Um, and it will protect you also if it doesn't work out with you and your co-founder, which by the way is also a high chance of occurring. I think 50%, maybe 60% of startups have some sort of co-founder breakup. And it is right. a significant reason why startups fail. It can really yeah. destroy things. So at least this way it protects you a bit. So that's one thing I would advise. Yeah, I, I think just today, they, there was a note from the Mercury founder who said he did a six-year vest or six-year um, yep. vest as well. And I'll, I'll add, because I see Edgar asked a good uh, clarifying question. So it's a six-year six sort of vesting cycle with three grants, each grant is a four-year standard um, grant. So it, it's a four-year standard grant with a one-year cliff on the first grant. All the other grants start vesting immediately when you get them. So once again, a year one, your first grant has started. It has a one-year cliff. And then uh, obviously at the end of one year, you have another three years. So it's going to be granting every single month or vesting every single month. On year two, your second grant starts and it starts, immediate, it vest, starts vesting immediately. There's no cliff. So by year two, you now have two of your grants that are vesting. By year three, same thing occurs. Your third grant starts. So now by year three, you have grant one, grant two, and grant three, all vesting at the same time. So that's where it's sort of a, um, a standard distribution. And now in the middle period, so year three and four, where you're hopefully doing the most valuable work and your company's really starting to take off, all three of your grants are vesting at the same time. Right. And the importance of the cliff is hyper important because so many times it just won't work out in the first few months when it's time to get really tough. So yeah. you want to make sure they don't walk away with a chunk of the equity. And frequently what we see, or at least in some of the companies I've been involved with, they've been six to 12 year journeys and some are still continuing. So yeah. come series B or series C, the investors will make you revest anyway, right? Restart mm -hmm. your vesting schedule in a different way. So, um, And if you do yeah. it this way, then they might not require you to do that. Um, right. Because at that point you're, you're still vesting stuff. They don't need to, to fix things out. It's just, it, it's such a better way to align all interests and remove potential pain in the future. And you're preparing for success of getting a large series B or series C where you would have to do this anyway. Interesting.